our battle isn't just against the EU. Our battle, if you think about it, really, is against the political class in this country who've sold us down the river, but not just to the EU. Not just to the EU. I want to highlight, for those that perhaps haven't seen it, the recent extradition case of a businessman, a retired businessman, called Christopher Tappin. Now, I have to declare an interest in this. I've, I've known Chris Tappin for nearly 40 years, for nearly the whole of my life. Uh, we live close to each other. We're members of the same golf club. I knew his father. I know his wife. I know the children. So he is a friend of mine. And I do very much take the view that a businessman, successful businessman, living in a big detached house, whose children have left home and are doing well, I take the view that a businessman in that position would not have risked everything on a transaction that stood to make him the handsome sum of $500. <laughs> to me, it doesn't make sense. But actually, folks, the issue isn't whether Mr. Tappin has or has not done anything wrong. The issue is that a 65-year-old retired businessman who has never been in trouble with the law for the whole of his life in this country, indeed, he's only ever had one speeding ticket throughout his whole adult life, the issue is that that man has been extradited to America without at any opportunity being able to present his side of the argument and without the American authorities producing any prima facie evidence at all. And that overturns every single good, decent principle of British justice that we have enjoyed since Magna Carta. And I put it to you that Tappin's extradition is an abomination. I'm also concerned about the judicial system that he's going to. You know, I used to think of America as being the land of the free. But I'm afraid that when those towers came down, and when George Bush said he was going to launch a war on terror, that that has in fact now become a war on liberty. And the plea bargaining system in America is such that you're put into prisons that are gang-ridden, that are violent, that are brutal, and certainly no way that we would ever consider putting people in prison. You're put in those conditions, and you're faced with a choice under a plea bargaining system. You're told that you may well not get to court for four years. So you'll spend the next four years on remand in one of these brutal prisons. You're told that your legal fees will be between one and two million dollars. And you're told that if the jury finds against you, you face life imprisonment. Or, you'll be told, under a plea bargaining system, if you plead guilty, you'll just get two years and then we'll let you go. Does that sound like a fair judicial system? Yes, well, that is the world, that is the world that my friend Chris Tappin now finds himself in. He's in just the most impossible position. I spoke to his wife on Thursday, um, he is being kept at the moment in a cell on his own. They've removed his books and his reading material. He's allowed out of the cell for two hours a day, but the lights are kept on for 24 hours a day. We're talking about really unpleasant and brutal conditions. It is quite wrong. But what have our government done about this? <laughs> Worse than nothing. Worse than nothing. In opposition, the Conservatives made the point that this treaty was wrong. And of course, George Bush said to Tony Blair, jump, and he said how high, didn't he? So we went to war in Iraq, and we signed this extradition treaty. David Blunkett, who was the Home Secretary at the time, has now said that the treaty was wrong, that it was a mistake, and it needs to be changed. The Cameron government, in opposition, promised to change it. I have repeatedly begged Theresa May, the Home Secretary, to contact the US Justice Department and to say to them, would they please drop their objection to bail on the basis that this man has never had a criminal record and that this man does not constitute a flight risk. He's not the sort of guy that's going to do a runner. She's done nothing. And when the Prime Minister, when the Prime Minister was questioned in PMQs two weeks ago, he gave the most utterly disingenuous answer. He said, you must remember that in Mr. Tappin's case, 
he was heard at a magistrate's court and at the High Court. Yes, Prime Minister, but without any prima facie evidence of any kind being put forward. And so Cameron giving the impression that this has been through fair process, frankly, I think is a disgrace. But the all-time low on this was when William Hague was interviewed on this question. It was at the end of an interview about Syria, and he was asked on the day the extradition took place, what about Mr. Tappin's case? And Hague said, I'm too busy for that. And he turned his back and he walked away. And what the British political class have done to freedom, democracy and liberty in this country is they have collectively turned their backs and walked away. Shame on them. So I am, I am today launching an e-petition on the Downing Street website and I'll ask you all please to sign that petition, to get your friends to sign that petition. Cameron goes to Washington on the 13th of March to meet Obama and we're demanding that the Prime Minister raises this issue in two weeks' time and that we renegotiate this treaty so that evidence of some kind must be put before a British judge and I hope, UKIP, that you will help me and support me in this campaign.